Hey everyone, Darren Eastman here. I'm joined with Pedro and with Gina. And today we're going to cover the new runner creation flow in GitLab. It's coming out in 16.0. Um, and Gina and Pedro will also do a demo of a new creation flow as well. So without further ado, I'm just going to share my screen and I'll give a kind of quick overview, a bit of background uh, in terms of what we've been doing um, since we last met. Let's see if we can get a slideshow thing to work. Um, actually, probably not, because every time I do slideshows in Zoom, I, I can never figure out how to get out of the slideshow. So anyway, today we have covered a new runner creation flow that's coming in 16.0. This is a quick background. It's basically a new workflow for creating a runner um, by authorized users and get that instances and replaces the previous workflow that used an always available, always visible registration token. Actually, we started masking it a few, a few releases back, but an always available registration token that is scoped to an instance level, a group or project. And you can see a nice little diagram here that Gina put together that kind of shows the, the current, the, the legacy registration process flow. Um, so just kind of quick comparing the, 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 so the legacy registration flow method with the new process. Um, in the new, in the registration, in the old uh, method, you're just basically going to the UI. So for example, if you're in the admin area, you'd make the registration token visible or invisible, or you just simply copy it. And then once you had that registration token copied, um, on the target environment on which you were installing or registering the runner from, whether it's a Kubernetes environment, slightly different, or say on your Macintosh OS laptop or, or virtual machine, you'd run the GitLab on a register command and you would enter that registration token that you had copied. And so that's how you register a runner to a GitLab instance group or project. In the new flow, you actually, an authorized user would actually first need to create the runner first in GitLab before the, the runlet on the host can be registered um, to the GitLab instance group or project. And, and Gina and Pedro will demo that flow for you so it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Um, so there are a few key callouts for the new process. So the generated authentication token can be reused to register more than one runner to the instance group or project for which a token is generated. So as you can see over here on the right-hand side, there's this kind of uh, hopefully reasonably visible diagram that shows that I've got two different runners on two different host systems, but they were registered to group A using the same registration token. So if you have workflows or use cases where the reuse of the auth token or the reuse of the runner configuration, I should say, to be more specific, is warranted, that is supported with the new method. Um, and I think Pedro and Miguel will touch, I'm um, oh, sorry, Miguel, um, Gina will touch a bit more about that as they go through the demo. Um, the other thing that's also I uh, want to call out in terms of the new process, the generated authentication token is only visible once in the UI. So as you're going through the workflow and you'll see that in the demo, once you go through the creation step, the token that's, that's split at the end is only visible once in the UI. So for now, you'll have to copy the registration token string to register run it using that token. It is highly recommended that you do not save the authentication token in non-secure lo locations, right? Because doing so would introduce a security risk because the authentication token is the thing that allows a runner entity to connect to your GitLab group project or instance and retrieve the Git repository, um, you know, and, and check that Git repository out, run scripts, et cetera. So you want to make sure that your authentication token is stored in a super so secure sort of um, location um, and so forth. And then for automation, you can use the API to generate an auth token that's scoped to the instance group or project. I think, Paige, you want to make a point about the API? Uh, so currently, we in the old registration methods, we expose uh, an API that allows you to register or create a, a runner. And typically, people do this um, before executing a job. They will create a runner ad hoc with a given configuration and receive an authentication token and uh, and use that for the for running the the job so the difference is that um in the new methods you would create the the configuration in in the ui you would say okay i want this runner to use this specific tags um, and then use the generated authentication token directly on the register command as you would have done with the registration token. Uh, so this removes uh, the need uh, lots of times to use the REST API to, to interact with GitLab in order to have access to a runner. You just have to know the, the authentication token. We still have the ability to create 
uh, new runners through REST API or GraphQL endpoint, uh, GraphQL mutation, depending on your, your preference. Uh, but that should be um, uh, less often needed uh, to resort to that. It's only needed if you need ad hoc configurations. So you, you would, uh, in a situation where you don't know upfront what tags will be needed or uh, um, other configurations like that that are decided at creation time, then you would resort to, to those APIs. And we can link at the end of the, the video you know, on the notes, we can put the, the links up to, to those APIs. So yeah, that, that's a call out I wanted to make. Thanks. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Pedro. Um, and just to wrap up the slides so we can get into a demo, in terms of the, the status of the feature, so the new creation workflows for the admin areas, recruitment projects, that's going to be available as of your GitLab 16.0 version that's shipping um, here in a couple of days. Um, and, and the other call out to make is that we are planning to completely remove the legacy registration token method from GitLab and GitLab 17.0, which is next year. So the new creation flows, if you do upgrade your GitLab instance to 16.0, one 16.0 available, you will see the new registration, the new authentication or creation flows, I should say, in GitLab 16.0. So I'll stop sharing and pass the screen. One thing uh, just before we, we close this is um, in between 16.0 and 17.0, uh, we're planning to allow admins or group project uh, runners, uh, project owners, to disable the registration methods so that they can test out um, and ensure that their um, you know, group or instance is locked out of the registration method. And this way they're able to decide if their uh, uh, APIs are, you know, their, their scripts are all migrated and um, yeah, they lock out the, the old methods to guarantee a good migration to path to 17.0. Got it. So it's kind of a, a nice mechanism for, for folks to test out a new authentication flow. And if yeah. they wanted to, they could always go back and work out things with exactly. the automation and that sort of thing. Hey, that's a good call up, Pedro. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to, I think, Gina, you're going to do the demo. Yes. All right. I will start sharing my screen. All right. Um, so I'm in a group right now in GitLab, but like Darren said, this is available group projects and the admin view. Um, so I am going to go and create a new group runner. And here you'll see a couple things up top is you'll see a message to provide feedback about this new flow. We're really looking forward to hearing what you think about it. If you don't want to see it, you can dismiss it and it will never be seen again. And um, then we also have this alert, basically is saying exactly what Darren was saying about when we deprecate the old registration process um, and we link you to GitLab Runner 16.0 just to see the release notes there so you can learn more if you need it further information. Uh, but gonna delete that as well. And so my first thing that I'm picking here is a platform to create the runner on. And uh, for my instance, I'm just going to do Mac OS. I'm downloading it on my operating system, my current Mac. And then these details are optional, but you're welcome to. Um, I know a lot of us use runner descriptions to identify runners. So for this one, I'll just say my group test runner and then configuration. I'm going to have it run on tag jobs, but you can add tags here as well and add maximum job timeout. So once I submit this, this next page will tell me now how to actually register the runner. So it, it was created and now I have to run the register command for it to actually register. So I've copied that command. I'm going to paste it in my terminal. And then I'm going to select an executor. I'm just going to do shell. So now I have confirmation that it's valid. Configuration was created. Um, you'll see here is the runner token, which Darren also mentioned that it only shows in the UI once. So if you're going to copy it, make sure to store it in a very secure location. Otherwise, if you don't need it again, then you don't have to copy it. 
And then uh, I've already choose, chosen an executor, but we've heard that sometimes it's difficult to choose those because you're not sure which which one to choose basically. So we do link out to documentation that gives a really great table of which one to use it for which scenarios. And then the last step here, um, it is optional depending on how you've set up your runner system. But for me, I need to run this command for the runner to be available to run jobs. So I'm gonna run GitLab runner run. And I see this message, so I'm going to close, stop that. So now I've gotten a success message that I've created a new runner. I'm going to go back to the runner's page, and I should see my new runner back at this page. Yep, there it is. And it's online. Um, and then per usual, you can click into it and see details and jobs from there. Oh, I'm going to go away. And then one other thing I wanted to show today was like Darren was saying, you can use the same authentication token uh, to to register runners, multiple runners, and those would have the same configuration that way. And if you would like to check out this epic, we are planning on being able to show those in the UI so that you can actually see how many that you have in a group in that instance. Um, this GIF is going pretty fast, but you'll be able to see how many are in a group. And then when you click into the run, you'll be able to see the details of those, like the status system ID version, et cetera. And then um, also the jobs that each one of those system IDs have run. We call them runner managers, uh, but each one has its unique system ID, which is how we tell them apart. And I will stop sharing now. Uh, one thing, maybe, maybe you could show the... Um... The old, the legacy methods that it's still available in the in the UI, like how people can still use the registration runner, uh, registration yes. token. Yes, great point. Okay, so in all of your in all the views, you'll see this uh, kebab button, and it shows still the registration token that you can use uh, to register in the old method, as well as the old registration instructions um, in that modal. So you can still just copy this single command and run it here. I'll do it just for this. And this is the flow that is going to disappear in 17.0. Right. And then, so you also get this warning message that says that the support for registration tokens will, it's deprecated and will be removed in 17.0 like Peter was saying. Um, so in this case, when I refresh this, it actually should show me this, this runner. Yep, um, didn't contact because I have to run that. But anyways, yep. if I had run GitLab runner run, it would contact. And then the last thing that we wanted to show here is you can still reset your registration token using the old method. So nothing is uh, not supported from the old method just yet. So you can still do everything that you need. Hey, and Pedro, just a quick question. So the, um, as you mentioned earlier, the plan to allow administrators to turn off the old method, once mm -hmm. they, they do so, I guess the ellipsia will go away for those yeah. folks that turn off the old method. Okay. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yep. All right. Stop sharing. All right. Pedro, so, thank you. Thanks, Pedro. No, uh, I think uh, all points are, were covered. That, that's great. Well, folks, um, as Jeannie and Pedro said, we'll link um, on when we post a video to GitLab and Filter, we'll add some links to maybe the feedback issues, maybe the epics. So if you have any questions about a new flow, um, whether it's automation questions, timing, usability, just go ahead and, and, and you know ping us on the uh, on the feedback issue. We'd love to hear your comments as we continue to evolve this. I'm Jeannie and Pedro. So nice. thank you so much for joining me on the demo and the great book and getting us to this day. This is, this is awesome. Appreciate it. Well, cheers, everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.